If you're familiar with PHP, you're probably quite familiar with Dreamweaver's repeat region server behavior, or otherwise known as just a while loop. It enables us to show results on a page, pull information in using a record set from a database table which has multiple fields, and load them all on the page automatically. Now, once you've applied this to the page, one thing you may have found, especially if it's the first times that you're using it, is that it will repeat the region vertically going down the page so that results appear on top of each other. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to apply that same server behavior to the page, but enable your results to appear not only vertically, but horizontally too. Before we get into the bulk of the tutorial, I just want to explain what I've done here and where we're going to be starting. So what I've done is I've just created a very simple website layout as you can see. Um, there's no text or images because I want the code to be very minimalistic and literally all I've got here is the bare essentials so that when we actually start applying the code uh, you can clearly see uh, what we're doing. Um, so obviously it's very minimal HTML and CSS. Now, just to explain the tutorial, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be applying Dreamweaver's uh, repeat region server behavior, which is probably something you're familiar with, considering the fact that you've actually found this tutorial. Um, but yeah, so obviously if you have, for example, a database table, you have multiple records in it, it could be for anything. Um, what you'll generally do is create a record set on the page, and then you'll bind certain things from that record set to the page and then you'll repeat the region so that for every record in the table um, the region is repeated so you get multiple uh, photographs or videos showing up on the page that's how it all works now one thing that a lot of people get a little bit confused about is why in Dreamweaver when you repeat a region it always seems to repeat the region vertically so it's just one underneath another and on top of another when a lot of people want to repeat a region uh, both vertically and horizontally so they might have three going across and three going down opposed to just having everything going down over, one over the top of each other so in preparation of the tutorial as I said I've created a template in Dreamweaver we're going to be applying this to and I've also gone ahead and cr uh, created a very simple table in a, in my local host uh, testing server so basically my database and I've created three records in the table so I can show you that we're repeating the region horizontally all right so let's go ahead and get started so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to apply a record set to the page. So I'm going to open up my bindings panel and I'm going to create a record set. Now you can give this record set name, name it whatever you want. Uh, you probably have a record set on your page if you're just trying to figure out how to sort this out horizontally. So I'm just going to say example and obviously I'm going to select the right table. And we're just going to say OK. So very, very minimalistic tutorial here, very basics and essentials. Um, now I'm going to be placing this in this div here. So I'm just going to make sure my cursor is in the right one. Yep. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create, um, and you can press, if you press F4 on Windows, you basically collapse all the panels. So we're going to be working in code view. So, well, most of the time. So I'm going to create a div and I'm just going to call this, uh, going to give this a class. Class doesn't exist yet, we're going to create that in a second. But we're going to give this a class of, let's call it um, repeat. And that's it. And, and within the div, I'm just going to place an image. Now, what we've done is we've just created a div and we've applied a class. Now, the class doesn't actually exist, so I'm going to come over to my CSS file and I'm going to create a class. Now, I might be getting ahead of myself, so I'm just going to explain. To create a class, you put basically a period, a full stop, and uh, repeat. So everything within these curly brackets is going to be applied to 
any of the elements on the page that have this class. Now basically the main thing I'm going to be applying here is the width which is going to be 160 pixels. And I'm going to actually set the height to 160 pixels as well. Now we are going to have to come back and actually add some more server behavior here. So I'm just going to come back to design view to show you what we've created. We've basically just created this one box. Now if we were to um, actually repeat this on the page manually with the code, I'm going to show you what happens. They are appearing literally um, one on top of another as you can see. It's very clear and easy to see that. So how do we actually make these sit side by side? Well it's all in the CSS. So again I'm coming back to this class and I'm going to apply the float rule and I'm going to float this to the left. Now if I do that come back to design view they're suddenly sitting side by side. So uh, I need to add a bit of breathing space. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to apply a margin. Now on top I want it to be 11 pixels and what I want from the side is going to be from the right side is 5 pixels uh, bottom 11 pixels and 5 pixels from the left side now if I come back to the design view you're going to see that suddenly it's looking a lot prettier on the page and this is basically all it is so I'm going to just close this uh, sorry I'm going to get rid of this div and now I'm going to basically come back to um, my server behaviors panel. I'm going to select this div, come to server behaviors, plus sign, repeat region, and I have the option to select uh, the record set. There's only one on the page, and I can either repeat this 10 times or all the records. I'll just say all records, and I'm going to say OK, and I'll save it. Now, if I come to code view, and the source code of the page, you're going to see that all it's actually done is applied a loop, a, a while loop to the page. Now a while loop, what that is, is it's basically it's a very simple PHP. It's basically saying do everything between this opening and closing squiggly bracket. And then it's a while loop, so it's basically saying do this so it's going to repeat everything between these squiggly brackets which is this div tag while and then it's setting a condition and the condition here is that this record set basically that it still has because we've not set a limit on how many records to display it's just showing all of the records within the uh, table so it's repeating them like that now if I was to come to um, and save this I can preview this in my browser and what you'll see is that it's repeating it three times because if you remember, if I close this, in my uh, database here, it has three. So if I insert another record into um, my table, so I'll go to insert and I'm going to say example four and click on go that'll add that record so it's now got four and if I now launch the page you'll see that it's now showing four records now to even more clearly show this to you just beside the image gonna bind from the record set the temporary name field and I'll um, yeah and I'll save that and now if I launch this in my browser you'll see example 1, example 2, 3, 4. Now what you'll find is that if you were trying to figure out how to set this, say you only wanted two images going across, it's all, it's all to do with the dimensions and your margins. So if we were to change this uh, slightly, it's all, it's all controlled with the CSS. So instead of having a width of 160, let's say we have a width of about 360 and save that. Now let's launch this in Explorer and if we refresh this on the page, it's now showing four. And the reason here actually 
that it's looking a bit odd is because I'm using a placeholder in my source code um, which just generates uh, an image to fill up a box so we've changed the dimensions to 360 so just to show you I'll change the width of this placeholder to 360 also and again if I launch this in Explorer you'll see a lot clearer what's what's happening here so that's how you do it that's how you repeat a region horizontally on a page thank you for following along with this video tutorial but I would just like to take this opportunity to encourage you to visit our official website simpletut.com here we uh, release all of our new tutorials uh, and it's an easy way to find the content from us that you're looking for uh, we have uh, various various tutorials from building user registration systems to file upload scripts, availability calendars, how to get more likes on Facebook, PHP classes, how to develop an advanced website layout with CSS and uh, div tags, um, how to create CSS menus. Uh, but of course, if you are stuck at any point on this or any other of our tutorials, we have a ask a question area, which is completely free. And you can use this section of our site to ask questions and contact a member of our team who'd be more than happy to assist you. We also offer a range of freebies ranging from uh, an availability calendar to a file upload script, a content locker, uh, pricing tables, uh, various Photoshop files and, and even a user registration system. And we also have a blog where we post uh, a, a lot of interesting uh, articles and also explain some of the code that we uh, write or should I say use in our tutorials. I'd also like to say that we are a free project and it is your support that enables us to keep going providing you new resources, materials and tutorials and of course support. Any donations that you would be generous to give will help us to continue with the work that we are doing and that you enjoy. If you are willing to make a donation then please visit our website simpletat.com and click on the donate uh, option on our menu and you'll be re redirected to PayPal where you can specify how much you'd like to donate. And of course I'd also like to encourage you to visit our new project, which is cssmenucreator.com. Again, there'll be a link in the description. Uh, and this website is, is one of our latest projects and enables you to create your own custom CSS menus online. All you have to do, and we have, as you can see here, a video showing you exactly how to use the site, but you can select a menu. So for example, if I select build menu here, you can literally build the menu online you get a preview up here and it literally writes the code and if you sign up to our site you'll be able to access the CSS so all you'll have to do is literally build your site, your menu online using our uh, advanced software here and literally then just copy and paste the code unlock the CSS and copy it into your existing pages um, so it's literally the easiest way you could ever imagine to build your CSS menus. It's a huge time saver for uh, experienced webmasters or people that are new to the CSS and web development world. It's a time saver and a money saver. I'd also like to encourage you to visit our official Facebook page which you can access either by a link in the description of this video if you're watching on YouTube or you could visit our website simpletut.com and access our Facebook page from there. There are links on the page. And here we, I'd like to encourage you to like our Facebook page because this will enable us to stay connected and update you when we release new tutorials, uh, various different resources, and even freebies. If you are looking for a web designer or perhaps a pre-built solution, then why not visit SiteEasy.com. This is where we offer a range of different products and services, including pre-built PHP applications, including user registration, CSS menu generator, uh, search site search, digital goods for PayPal, comment systems, billing systems, and much more. We also offer pre-built websites. Our pre-built websites include e-commerce, social networking, content management, file upload, property listings, and much more. And of course, if you'd like to get in touch with a member of our team for any issue, 
um, then please do so by visiting our website, clicking on the support option from the menu and filling out this form. And you'll be able to contact us and a member of our team will be more than happy to contact you to resolve any queries you may have. Once again, thank you very much for following along in this video tutorial. Have a great day.